Well, I'm sorry to start with bad news, but eight out of 10 of you are going to experience back pain at some point in your life. That's not a very pleasant thought, is it? Here's something else unfortunate. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, if you happen to be between 18 and 24 years old, I think I saw a few of you between that age bracket here, a few, your odds of experiencing that back or neck pain in the next 12 months actually increases. How is that possible? Does that seem right? Does that seem right to you? Why would our odds actually go up if we're younger? Well, we're all actually starting to break down. In fact, two of the top 10 reasons any of us might see our doctor are for ailments directly related to musculoskeletal breakdown and poor posture. Why do you suppose this has happened? What has changed in our life? What's different in your world? I bet you know the answer. <clears throat> Actually, I bet it's sitting right there on the table and right there on the table and right there. I bet not a single person in here wouldn't be able to reach into their pocket or their purse and pull out what is now almost an iconic symbol of the time that we live in. The average 14-year-old has more computing power in the palm of their hand than most of us have had our entire adult lives. All we have to do to use it is be willing to spend more hours sitting and slumped over. Any chance that's maybe impacting our musculoskeletal health? Any chance it's affecting our posture and alignment? Well, just how bad has it got? My father used to have great sayings. He said to me, Angelo, a little rain never hurt anyone, but a lot could kill you. I find that appropriate. In fact, so does a company called Simply Health in the UK who conducted a study. They conducted a study and found, a survey, and found that the average 18 to 24-year-old spends 8.83 hours a day in front of their computer, mobile device, or cell phone. 8.83 hours a day, almost nine hours. That did not include traditional television time. So you can do some math with me and you can see why we're starting to run into some troubles. For the first time in human history, we actually spend more time in front of a screen than we do sleeping in our bed. <clears throat> we got iPads, we got iPhones, we got iPods, and we all have eye posture to go with it. <laughs> so what is eye posture? Well, it's this. And that's not the first time you've seen it. <clears throat> it's excessive time spent in the seated and or slumped over position that causes our head and shoulders to roll forward. But what I'd like to share with you is a different perspective. I want to explain the physiology behind what's happening. See, we are at odds. There's a war between our lifestyle and our physiology. Your body is compensating in ways you may not have given it permission. You may not even be aware. One of the ways our body compensates is to keep our head upright and our eyes level on the horizon. We do this because it's tied in with our balance and depth perception and proprioception and coordination, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Suffice to say, whenever possible, your body will adjust your position in space, your joint position and your center of gravity to bring your head upright. So now what does that mean when we're standing like this? Well, we have a couple options. Either we're going to crane our neck up. How does that look? Does that look very comfortable? Anytime somebody's talking to us in front of us, or maybe this one looks familiar. Our head and shoulders roll forward. So instead we widen our feet, toe out, drop our hips forward, our center of gravity. Ah, that's better. Now I can see you all. My head's upright. You laugh because you recognize that position. You recognize it in your friends and your family and your coworkers, and maybe you recognize it in the mirror. <clears throat> what are the odds that these postures are not leading to our musculoskeletal breakdown? Well, the way I see it, we have two options. Either it's going to gradually over time undermine our postural health, or we're not gonna get that far. When our body is under load in a biomechanically compromised position, we're going to suffer an injury. That injury can be sudden and it can be catastrophic. 
Unfortunately, I'm speaking from experience. I wish I weren't. This cane right here. <clears throat> you know, I actually thought about snapping it over my knee today. This cane was my companion for 10 years. For 10 years, this went with me as I went from doctor to doctor, from surgery to surgery, and it took me that time to discover I could not battle both gravity and my injuries at the same time. It wasn't until I changed my perception of things and I altered uh, my priorities. I prioritized postural health, resetting my center of gravity, achieving a neutral position, and that's what's helped me to overcome my injuries, at least well enough to be here with you all today. And so why don't we all do the same? I thought what we could do is go through just a few simple movements to get, you go, no, don't make us do it. Yeah, we're going to do a few simple movements together. Most people don't spend much time in a room without, with me without uh, me making them move around a little bit. So what I thought we'd do is spend just a few moments moving our bodies in a way that will help reset, reboot, if you will, your center of gravity and optimize your postural health. So we ready? Here we go. I'm going to ask you to stand up, please. So just a reminder, it, it, please follow along if you're able. If you're healthy enough, participate. These movements are quite gentle, but if you just want to observe, that's fine. I have one more favor. Ladies, if you're wearing high heels, please slip them off. Technology isn't the only thing that alters our center of gravity. So I'll give you a moment to do that. And I'm going to ask you all to find a position with your feet hip width apart, right about here. Now, I do this a lot, and it amuses me when I ask people to stand hip width exactly how wide they think their hips are. So hips are about this wide, right here, narrow. Next, I'm going to ask you to pull your shoulders back until your arms are hanging directly by your sides and your thumbs are pointed forward. That's going to create a very upright position. Now, all at the same time, on a count of three, we're going to squeeze our butt. I'm dead serious. We're doing this. We're all going to look silly together. One, two, three, squeeze your butt. There we go, and relax. Now you all are gonna keep doing that for, oh, 30 seconds, and I'm going to explain why I have almost 300 people in a room standing, squeezing their butt. So keep going, I will know if you're not doing it. So we're squeezing, releasing, squeezing, releasing, and I'm gonna explain what's going on here. So a couple things. First, uh, it amuses me, so I thought we would lead with it. <clears throat> Second, we have, keep going. We have become a nation of ultra sitters, have we not? Because of that, your hip flexors have become anarchists. They have hijacked your healthy pelvic position and altered your center of gravity. In the meantime, your glutes have done nothing to stop it. They're waving white flags, turning the other cheek. This exercise is going to remind them they have a job. And that's why we're going to do this for another five, four, three, two, one time. Excellent. <clears throat> Moving right along, I'd like to ask you to interlace your fingers together, place your hands behind your head, and pull and hold your elbows wide. Next, engage your core. Pull in your belly button. Now, all we're going to do, maintaining those wide elbows, we're simply going to march in place, keeping your knee and foot pointed straight forward. Simple, just march in place. Only come as high as you're comfortable. We're going to do this for about 30 seconds. So this exercise is engaging key muscles of the thoracic spine, thoracic extensors that are responsible for battling that forward head and rolled forward position. Simultaneously, it's engaging core muscles that are responsible for coordinating upper and lower body movement. This exercise is going to help reset your center of gra gravity and strengthen your posture. And we're doing it for another five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Well done. See, not too tough. One more exercise. We're going to return to that foot forward position and we're going to toe in just slightly. Next, I'm going to have you fire once again your glutes and hold them tight. Now we're going to pull our shoulder blades back and hold. Externally rotate those arms until your thumbs are almost pointed behind you. Good. Small reverse circles. Simple. We're going to do this for about 30 seconds. So this movement is engaging muscles of the upper back responsible for maintaining your head and shoulders in the upright and back position. 
This exercise directly battles that forward head and rolled forward position that we find ourselves in so many hours of the day. And so we're going to do it for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Beautiful. Well done. You may return to your seats. Thank you for participating. So what have we done here? <laughs> <clears throat> have we found the cure? That's it. Just do these three exercises. Well, what these movements have done, is while not a cure, they're a calculated first step. They're a calculated start to the process. See, humans historically have exercised for two primary reasons. You know what that is? We want to lose weight. We want to get strong. And there's nothing wrong with either of those two things. Keep doing more of that. That's good. What I am here to propose is that we have a third fundamental need for exercise and movement in our life. And that is to battle technology's impact on our bodies. You're going to hear more and more in the months and years to come from the medical community, from the fitness community as it trickles down and we talk more about the value of prioritizing our postural health. But here, now, today, I'm asking you all to become early adopters. Too many people are suffering needlessly. Too many of our young ones are experiencing injuries when it's not necessary. Prioritize your postural health become an early adopter.